Ida for refusing to attend my sister's wedding after she uninvited my partner? I could hear the rain tapping against the windows like it had something urgent to say, but I couldn't focus on it. My phone sat face down on the kitchen counter, mocking me in its silence. Maybe I was overreacting. Maybe I wasn't. But when I flipped it over and saw the last text from my sister, the anger that had been simmering inside me for days started boiling over again. You know how mom feels about Charlie. I really want you at the wedding, but I think it's best if he doesn't come. That was it. No explanation, no compromise, no acknowledgement of the fact that Charlie and I had been together for almost three years. She didn't even call him by name just he, as if he were some kind of inconvenience instead of the person I loved. I didn't text her back right away. I mean, what do you say to someone who's telling you to pick between your partner and your family? I could feel Charlie watching me from across the kitchen, waiting for me to say something. He was stirring a pot of pasta, but I could tell by the way he was moving the spoon fast, restless that he'd seen the text. We were good like that, picking up on each other's moods, even when we didn't talk about it. So, he finally said, glancing up at me with a half-smile that didn't reach his eyes, what's the verdict? Am I still in the wedding or am I officially persona non grata? I stared at him for a second, trying to swallow the lump of frustration that had been building since my sister first started sending passive-aggressive texts about the wedding. It's not you. It's mom, I muttered, quoting my sister's words like they explained everything, even though they didn't. Apparently, you and her can't breathe the same air. He let out a laugh, the kind you give when something's so ridiculous you don't know how else to react. Yeah, well, I've been on her bad list ever since I showed up to that family dinner in skinny jeans. I cracked a smile despite myself, remembering how my mom had stared at his jeans like they personally offended her, whispering to my dad something about proper men's clothing. It had been awkward, sure, but it wasn't the kind of thing that should still matter almost two years later. I leaned against the counter, folding my arms. You're too edgy for them, I teased, but the humor felt hollow, weighed down by the nagging thought that maybe, just maybe, there was a part of me that understood where my mom was coming from. My family was traditional, the kind of people who liked things neat and predictable. Charlie wasn't neat or predictable, not in the way they wanted. He was impulsive, a little rough around the edges. But that's what I loved about him. He made me feel alive, like I wasn't just walking through life trying to check off all the right boxes. But my family, well, they saw him as a threat to their perfect little picture of how things should be. I could feel the tension whenever we went to family gatherings, the stiff smiles, the subtle comments about finding someone who fits, like love was some sort of puzzle piece that had to match just right. Charlie set the spoon down, his smile fading. Listen, babe, I don't want to be the reason you fight with your family. If it's easier for you to go without me no, I interrupted, shaking my head more forcefully than I intended. That's not happening. If they don't want you there, I'm not going. Period. He blinked, surprised, and maybe even a little touched. I didn't throw ultimatums around lightly, especially when it came to my family. But this wasn't just about a wedding anymore. It was about something bigger about feeling like I had to choose between the life I'd built with Charlie and the life my family thought I should have. And if I was being honest, it stung. My sister, Laura, was supposed to be my best friend. Growing up, we'd been inseparable. We shared clothes, secrets, dreams about the future. But somewhere along the way, things had changed. Maybe it was when I moved out and started dating someone who didn't fit the mold. Maybe it was when she got engaged to Greg, her high school sweetheart, the guy who never made waves, always showed up in a crisp button down for Sunday dinners. He was perfect for her, and I was happy for them. But the gap between us seemed to get wider every time I brought Charlie to a family event and felt like I had to apologize for who he was. Charlie crossed the kitchen and wrapped his arms around me, pulling me into a hug that felt like a promise. We'll figure it out, he whispered into my hair. Whatever you decide, I'm with you. And just like that, the knot in my chest loosened a little. But it didn't disappear. The thought of missing my sister's wedding weighed on me like a boulder, pressing down on my chest every time I imagined the ceremony, the speeches, the dancing. I didn't want to miss it. But I also didn't want to sit there pretending like everything was okay when the person I loved wasn't even welcome. The next day, I called Laura. I thought about texting, but this needed to be a conversation, not a passive-aggressive exchange of emojis and one-word responses. She picked up on the third ring. Hey, sis she said, her voice cheerful, as if she hadn't just thrown a grenade into my life two days ago. I was wondering when I'd hear from you. I didn't bother with small talk. Why can't Charlie come? There was a pause, and I could almost hear her trying to come up with the right words to make this seem like no big deal. Look, it's not personal. It's just that, well, you know how mom is. She doesn't think he's a good fit for our family, and I really don't want any drama on my wedding day. 
I clenched my jaw, trying to keep my voice steady. So, you're uninviting my partner because mom can't handle him? Laura, he's been nothing but kind to you. This isn't fair. It's not just about mom, she said, a little more defensive now. It's about the vibe, you know? I want everything to be perfect. And Charlie, well, he doesn't exactly blend in. Blend in. There it was. The real issue. Charlie didn't blend in with their perfectly curated lives, and that made them uncomfortable. I'm not going to pretend like this is okay, I said, my voice rising despite my best efforts. If Charlie isn't welcome, I'm not coming either. There was a long silence on the other end of the line, and for a moment, I wondered if she'd hung up on me. Then, finally, she spoke, her voice tight. Are you serious? You're really going to skip my wedding over this? I don't want to, I said, my throat tightening. But I'm not going to sit there and smile while my partner is being excluded for no reason. Fine, she snapped, and I could hear the hurt in her voice now, sharp and cutting. Do what you want. But don't expect me to be okay with it. She hung up before I could say anything else, leaving me standing in the middle of my apartment, my heart pounding in my chest. I didn't cry right away. I just stood there, staring at the wall, trying to process what had just happened. I knew this was going to hurt, but I didn't expect it to feel like this as if a piece of my past had been ripped away, leaving me with nothing but a hole where my relationship with my sister used to be. Charlie found me like that a few minutes later, standing frozen in the living room. He didn't say anything, just walked over and pulled me into his arms. For a long time, we didn't speak. We didn't need to. The wedding day came and went, and I didn't go. The first few days after my conversation with Laura were heavy, filled with guilt and doubt. But as time passed, I found a strange sense of peace in my decision. It wasn't easy, but it felt right. And more than anything, it was a reminder that sometimes standing up for the people we love means standing up for ourselves too. A few weeks later, I got a letter in the mail. It was from Laura. I hesitated before opening it, my heart pounding in my chest. Inside was a short note, scribbled in her messy handwriting. I'm sorry. I didn't realize how much I was asking you to sacrifice. I miss you. Let's talk. It wasn't perfect, but it was a start. And for now, that was enough.